This is a notes for section 10.3 volumes of prisms and cylinders. If you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video and read the section first. Um, so the big idea here is that we want to be able to find the volume of prisms and cylinders knowing the, you know, using the only thing that we know so far, and that's uh, the volume of a, a box. We know the volume of a box. We've made the assumption that that's equal to the length times the width times the height. So we kind of want to use that idea as we try and, and develop a volume formula for all prisms and cylinders. Okay, And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to say it, with any prism or cylinder, we always start with a base that has a certain area. We'll call that base area uh, B here. Okay, so We're going to say that our base has an area B. Now, if we take that and we, we if, if, if we have a prism that has that same base and then we raise it one unit so basically we're going up one unit well then there's going to be b unit cubes that would sit on that base okay so the volume of that thing would be um, b cubic units okay because there would be p b one unit cubes now if we kind of continue that idea then if we instead of raising it just one unit what if we raise it h units well then we're going to have b b times h or uh, the number of unit cubes that would fit in that figure would be the area of that base times the height of the prism and what that does for us is it allows us to say that the volume for any prism or cylinder will be equal to the area of its base times the height of that prism. All right, before looking at example one, you might want to re-look at example one in your book. This one is similar to it, and we're going to use some of the information from that problem as we go forward. Uh, it says, suppose a prism has a base that is the size of a basketball court, 31 yards by 17 yards. If the prism contains the amount of oil that is mentioned in example 1, 20.7 times 10 to the 6th, and that's barrels, if you go back and look at example number 1 there, what is the height of the prism? Okay. Well, we, we know from example 1 in the book, and they went through the calculations for that, that if you have 20.7 times 10 to the 6th barrels, that that's uh, the equivalent of 116,229,947 cubic feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to be working with things in terms of cubic feet. Well, if that's the case, if my, if my base is in yards, I want to first convert my base to square feet. So that would be like 13, or excuse me, 31 yards times... Um, uh, 17 yards but then we have to convert those to feet well 31 feet that'd be like 31 times 3 or 93 feet times and then 17 times 3 which would be 51 feet so we got to get our base first of all in square feet. So let's do that. Let's go to our calculator to get that value. So if I multiply 93 times 51, I get 4,743. 4, now, so if that's my base and that's my volume, I can relate those two to find the height by looking at my volume formula, which is the area of the base times the height. So I'm going to plug in the two things I know and solve for what I don't know. So I'm going to plug in the volume. Okay. That's the number of cubic feet I have. I'm going to plug in my base area, which is 47.43. And then I'm going to solve for H. So I'm going to need to divide both sides by 47.43. Okay. Now if I do that, I, once I have that set up, this stuff over here is going to cancel out, so I know I have just H, and now I'm going to go to my calculator to find the value of the left-hand side. 
So if I do that on my calculator, I get about 24,500. We round it to the nearest foot, about 24,506 feet. So that would represent the height, that 24,506 feet. All right, so we've established that if we look at a right cylinder or a right um, prism, that it, the volume is just whatever the area of the base is times the height. Well, what we want to do is we want to extend that beyond just right uh, prisms and cylinders, actually to oblique ones as well. And if, if you kind of, if you, if you imagine figure one here is made up of thin slices like congruent sheets of paper. Okay, and if we shift that stack of thin slices and we make a picture like two, where we've, we've just kind of put it, slanted it off to the side, notice that the height and the area of the base um, would, would be still exactly the same. It's just that we've had it slanted over here. So here's my height now measured over here as opposed to uh, measured perpendicular to the base. Okay, now if that's the case, um, the volume of prism 1 and the volume of prism 2, we haven't taken any sheets of paper out, so they would still represent the same thing. So if they have the same volume, and we know the volume of prism 1 is the base times the height, well then that must occur for the volume of prism 2 as well, which basically leads to the idea of Cavalieri's principle. Okay, And Cavalieri's principle is that, number one, the prisms have their bases in the same plane. So if, if we have a plane that contains two bases, okay, and each slice is parallel to the bases, the slices in each prism have the same area. The conclusion is that these solids have the same volume. So basically what we're saying is that no matter what, so basically what Cavalieri's principle is telling us is that if, if we have um, any sort of, of prisms or cylinders that are that have the same height and the same base area doesn't matter what the shape is they will have the same volume and it really just reiterates the point that the volume of any prism or cylinder is the area of its base times its height all right, so let's take a look at example two here. It says the base of an oblique rectangular prism is three units by six units, and its height is 15 units. Find its volume. So as we established before, the volume of any uh, prism or cylinder is the base times the height. So what we want to do is we want to start out with that formula. Volume equals the area of the base times the height. Now we're looking for volume, so I need to know what the base and the height is. Well, the base we can find. We aren't given it, but we know it's a rectangle, and it's 3 by 6. So I'm going to take 3 units times 6 units. Therefore, the, eight, the area of the base is 18 square units. And we're also given that the height of this is 15 units. Therefore, the volume is going to be equal to 18 times 15. So on my calculator I can multiply 18 times 15 which would be 270 and now we had units squared times units so we're gonna have volume in units cubed. So that would be the answer for example 2. So let's take a look at example three here. It's, it's actually the guided example from page 612 in your book if you want to take a look at that one as well. It says a cylindrical duct is used to expel hot air from the basement clothes dryer. The length of the duct is 12 feet. Okay. The duct goes down at an angle so that the bottom ring of the duct is in the basement is 10 feet lower than the top. The duct diameter is 14 inches. Now that we've got to be careful with that. 14 inches. Notice how these other things are in feet and this is in inches. Find the volume of air in the, in the duct. So basically we want to find out how much volume is in that cylinder. Well since it's a cylinder it doesn't matter that it's oblique we're still going to use the idea that the volume of that cylinder is its base area times its height. Okay. So let's find the base area and let's 
what we'll do first of all is we'll just work with this in square inches to begin with. I know the, the base is a circle, therefore to find its area, I'm going to take pi r squared. Okay. Now, keeping that in mind, um, this 14 is the diameter, therefore the radius would be 7, so it would be pi times 7 squared, or 49 pi, and I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. So that would represent the number of square inches we have. Okay. Now the height, if we're talking about square inches, if this is 10 feet, in terms of inches, that would have to multiply that by 12, therefore it's 120 inches. So that's what I'm going to put down for my height. So now I'm going to plug that stuff in. So the volume is equal to 49 pi times 120. Just plugging in my base and my height. And now I'm going to multiply that stuff together on my calculator. When I do that, I get 18,473 cubic inches. Remember, you're going to hit control enter so that you can get approximation to that. 18,473, that's the nearest... Uh, cubic inch that is okay so that would represent the volume that we would have now if I want that value in terms of cubic feet I would need to divide this value by 12 squared remember because we're to, excuse me by um, 12 cubed excuse me um, so if I take 18,473 and divide it by 12 cubed if I do that, you're going to notice that I get about 10.7. So it would be about 10.7 cubic feet. So if I wanted to express this in cubic feet, we would say it's about 10.7 cubic feet. All right, finally, let's look at example four. It's, it says a hexagonal or hexagonal prism has two bases, base 1 and base 2. Base 1 is in plane M, and base, base 2 is in plane N. If base 1 is not changed, how can base 2 be moved so that the volume of the prism does not change? Basically, what we want to do is we want to think about Cavalieri's principle here. And it, as long as we know that they, they remain in the same plane, their heights will remain the same, and their base areas will remain the same. Therefore, their volumes will remain the same. So all I need to know is that base 2 remains in plane N, and if that happens, they will have the same volume. So plane N has to contain that um, base 2.